All right, everybody. Hello, hello. I'm Chris. Let's talk about some cool stuff here. So I've shown uh, something like this before, but I think it's important to uh, kind of take a look at list formatting. So there's lots of different options in list formatting. You know, we started off with just being able to do columns, and now we can go kind of crazy with all sorts of stuff, which is awesome, but it can be a little confusing if you're just starting out. So let's take a look at it, and then we're going to dive into one specific section. So we looked at this before, right? You've got this idea of a surface. So where your list is going to render, whether it's the list view, Microsoft list, web part, um, you know, mobile app, that kind of thing. There's going to be standard UI elements. There's going to be like the headers, the unformatted groups, an aggregates row, you know, all those kind of things. That's just standard UI and all this extra stuff that's going to come along. Then you're going to have your data, right? That's just where, you know, your fields are going to render and however they normally look. And then we can do some actual formatting here, and that's those column formats. We can apply those at the field or site column level, right, to one or more of our columns here. Um, and those will just have a nice display. Uh, we can even do what's called a view format row class, which is just a simple, uh, we can put an expression and say for every row that matches this expression, you know, slap this class on there. And that again will play nicely with our column formats, all nice and stacks. Or we can go a little crazier. We can use what's called a row formatter where we can control the entire render of the surface row by row, right? So we control this whole render and then it gets applied on each row as it goes. With our view formats, which are applied at the view level, so you can have multiple uh, per list as you switch between views. Even within the view, you can switch to what's called uh, the gallery view. And we can control that separately uh, through a tile props format, where we can apply this and these can live simultaneously together. All right, and then we have this idea that we can go even a little further and we can get rid of the column header. We can substitute our own, right? We can't really customize the column headers. This is a just kind of hacking it in there. But there's also this new stuff we uh, saw demoed by Navid a couple weeks ago, uh, which is where if you've got uh, groups, right? So you've got your grouping, you've decided to group by a column, and then you've got some aggregates. So you've got a, a footer per group that shows the aggregates for that individual group, but you've also got a footer for the entire list, which shows the aggregates, right, counts, averages, sums, all that kind of thing across the entire list. So those are some things, and now we've got the ability to customize those. We can use what's called group props to kind of customize our header and footer of the individual groups. And then we've got this other guy called the footer formatter, which allows us to touch that kind of aggregate row. And both the footer and the aggregates at the bottom and the footer and the individual groups can be hidden. All right, and then of course we've got our form where, you know, by default we've got a kind of a standard UI, but we can customize that further. Our column formats are going to show up there. They're going to be translated over, but then we also have control over both the header up at the top here and we control the footer down here. And while that's not really formatting, we can control the body layout in terms of sections, right? So we've got a detail section and an unnamed section up here, and we've got attachments down here with little lines. So there's quite a bit we can do. So all of that to say, uh, we've got samples and everything else and guidance and multiple videos on each of these areas. And a couple weeks ago, we look, take a look specifically at group props and kind of that for, footer formatter. Uh, what I want to do, um, so that was done by Microsoft and there was a great presentation. Check that out on YouTube, right, that kind of introduced the concepts and kind of the vanilla view. What I want to do is I want to dive a little bit deeper into it kind of look through our options and kind of play and experiment a little with you. OK, so let's take a look at that. Let's see, we go back to the, yeah. All right, we go to our classic War Horses site. We get Vess out of, get out of here. All right, you know, so we take a look over here. Now we've got this FAQs list, right? Pretty common scenario. And in fact, we've actually shown this off before with a format. So we applied like a format like this, right? Which is cool. Um, and this format is a sample that is available as part of our, our GitHub repo. And you can check that out. But what if we wanted to do something a little more classic? Like one of the things people have always been frustrated with with this kind of thing is I want to collapse these, right? For you know, for this case, I've got pretty small answers here. But what if I've got really long ones and I want to collapse that? Or I want to group these by various things. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Imagine that. So let's take a look at the easiest way to accomplish that. So I've got this collapse simple. Um, I've got the title field, which I've just renamed to question, and I've got a multi-text field called answer. And what I want to do is I want to apply some grouping and some formatting to that. Now, one of the things that's going to be frustrating is there's not a group by option for the title field. So we've got to go to our list settings and go old school view settings. So if we scroll all the way down, we find our collapse simple view. Some of you are having PTSD just seeing this. 
so sorry, so sorry. But if we come down to group by, now we can select our title field, which in this case has been renamed to question. So I'm going to select that, all that just to get the grouping. So now I've got it grouped, and that's cool. So now I've got this kind of FAQ look, right? So I've got a question, expand it. Hey, there's the answer. It's a little awkward, right? So I mean, we can do a few things like we could take this and we could say uh, hide this column. Right, it still works because it's part of the grouping. So now it's not as awkward with the question isn't repeated inside there, but it's still a little weird that it says question, colon, can I have a hug? And it's always gonna say one, right? Because we always have a one-to-one -one answer. What if we wanna customize that a little further? Well, it wouldn't be a demo if it wasn't possible. So we're gonna format this current view. In this case, we're gonna go to advanced mode. And for this demo, I'm just gonna delete the schema just to get it out of the way. All right, in this case, you know, this is a view format. So I can apply all the things I would normally apply, but in this case, I'm going to do group props. When I say group props, now I've got access to a variety of things. I can set the header, which is all we're showing here. We don't have any aggregates or anything like that. So I'm going to say header formatter. I always write header format, it's header formatter. All right, you're going to hit that. And then this is just the same rules as column formatting here. So I'm going to say Helm type, all right? In this case, we're going to say a div. And then we're just going to say, text content, all right? And just for our purpose, we say, wowee, all right? And look at that. Now we are controlling that. You notice we can't control, uh, you know, the, the carrot that goes up or down here. We don't have any access to that, but everything from the carrot over, we can control that experience. Here, we're just putting text. What if we want to put that value like we had before? Well, we have a magic string called at group, which has three different properties on it, all right? We have the column display name, all right, and notice that N is capital, unlike in the body sections. And if we preview that, uh, well, we have to type it correctly, apparently. You can see my, uh, I don't know, we'll move on from that. <laughs> I type wrong here. Okay, add group, and we'll say uh, value or field data. We'll come back to the uh, column display name in a second. Preview that. There we go. So group.field data is really the one we're after in this case. So group.field data is going to be just whatever that field is, right? So if it's a person field, you'll have access to the sub properties the same way you would anywhere else. You can say dot title, you know, dot email. Um, if this is say a, you know, a, a currency column or it's a yes, no, and you don't want it to say true or false when it's yes, no, you could say display value. In this case with, with text is going to be the exact same. And so it doesn't change anything there. But so in other words, field data, consider that a placeholder for whatever your value is. So you can do a lot with that. All right. Well, what if I want some of those other things, right? I want to say count. I want to know the number of items displayed there, right? That's that one. So I can do all sorts of things with that, right? If I want to highlight colors or go crazy with that, I can. But again, in this case, I just want the field data. I'm just trying to simplify things so it doesn't say question with that number. So that looks cool, right? Can we go a little further and make this... Uh, a little better. Well, of course we can, All right? So we're going to come up here and we're going to add, add hide column header, All right? And we're going to add that. I'm just going to say true on that because we don't need this up here, All right? So let's preview that. Bam, that's now gone. Now we've got this selection going on here. We don't need that either. So let's put hide selection. I'm just going to say true on that and put a comma. Preview that sucker. And what did I type wrong? <laughs> I'm having trouble with my typing. Okay, well, either way, whatever the, uh, someone got in the text, I don't remember what the uh, the hide, uh, hide selection or hide selector or whatever it is, uh, there's a value for that. I will tell you there is a, oh, you know what it is? It's, it's showing here, there's a bug and that's what it is showing. So you'll notice when I hide the selection, which is correct, you see I have no selection. There is a bug right now, it's submitted on the issues list, we'll see where it goes. Whereas as soon as you expand, you now have a selector. So that's a little weird, uh, but it's 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 still workable here, right? So this is pretty good. I'm just going to save this, All right? And that's cool. Now I've got a very, very different view. It does not look like a standard list view. And I can even come over to like a page, right? If I edit this page and I just grab a web part, you know, I'll grab that list web part, you know, and here I'm going to put it to uh, the FAQs list. All right, let's edit this thing so I can pick my view, and the view is collapsed simple. I hit apply. All right, and there we go. And I can, you know, take away the command bar. Uh, you know, if I don't want this display, fun fact: if I, if I just put a space there, it's no longer going to display. All right, so now we hit that, and I'm going to hit publish. 
I can't really get rid of the see all. Uh, but from there, you can imagine, you know, especially if I add other things to this, right? This is a, we've just made basically a little web part, right? a little application where you can display this stuff. And if you want to put fancier styles on there, right, you want to make this a big, cool looking bar, right, with icons or anything else, all of that's available to you. And all of that now can be done with formatting, and you get really that interactive piece, this collapse and expand, which we didn't have before. If you combine that with something like the hover cards, you really start getting into a little miniature application here. All right, so that's really cool. Let's go a little further, shall we? Yeah, we got five minutes, why not? So if we take a look, I've got a couple of extra columns on here. So this is just a standard non-grouped view of the same FAQs list, right? I've got a ratings column and a really important. Uh, this one just has a simple column format just to show that that's gonna be respected with our grouping. And right, so in this case, I'm gonna group by really important, right? So now I got the no and I got the yes. And in this case, I wanna add some of those total columns. So I'm gonna add a total of, let's see, on the rating, we'll do an average, right? And we'll just put a count here just so we can see one. All right, so not on that, but totals. And we'll just go count. All right, so now what you'll notice here is every group right, has its own uh, footer, right? Which shows the average and the count for that group. This count is not very accurate because it's, uh, yeah, it's just counting the yeses, right? But then we've got here, uh, the same thing, but we have an aggregate footer on the very bottom. So that's cool, right? But what about uh, if we want to change some of that around? So let's format this view. Now, in this case, let's target this uh, list forward footer at the bottom right now, which only shows up with our aggregate row. And get rid of all that again. This one is going to be footer formatter. And everything go in column formatting, go here, right? So I'm going to say Elm type is div. And I'm going to say text content is, I don't know, donkey. That's some kind of lesser horse. Sounds right. All right, so preview that. Now, here's what's interesting. You notice that it drew it in both spots, right? So the footer format formatter, because it's called like row formatter and all the other ones, you might expect I can now control this entire footer row. And that's not true. Uh, it's more of a template that applies, and it will be drawn in the same spot as your original column. So even if you're coming in here and you're doing something like row formatter, which we're just going to put some junk here just to show that that works. All right, we'll just put a Elm type of div as well. And then we'll just say text content just to show that we're overriding the whole thing is wow. That sounds great. OK, so the idea here is even though I'm controlling the entire render of the row, where my footer formats go right here is still going to be in line with those original columns, even if I hide these columns. So it's just something to keep in mind. It's a bit of a limitation in some ways. In other ways, it's really nice not to have to draw those uh, where they go. All right, so let's get rid of that, though, because that's distracting. Get rid of that guy. So that's how we can have a footer format. That's beautiful. We can also do something like maybe we just like this is the aggregate value for across everything is not important to us, right? So we want to say hide footer. And we only, I'm going to set that to true. All right, I'm going to preview that. And now we only have the footer for the group, right? So that's neat. Now, what if I want to apply a cool format to do some other stuff with it? Well, good news, we can. I'm going to hurry it up here because we're running out of time. And so if I grab a footer formatter I've already got over here on my magic hidden screen, all right, I'm just going to grab this and we'll just paste it in here. So I got a footer formatter and we preview that. Now, the only thing it's really doing is it's taking a look at what this called at column aggregate. It's a magic uh, string as well that can only be used inside uh, you know, the groupings, so the footers. So we've got at column aggregate, and you can get the type. So in this case, I've got an icon based on the type, right? If it's count, I'm going to show this, you know, Oglethorpe, this hashtag. Um, or if it's, you know, any other type, I'm just throwing a calculator. But if I want to go a little crazier, uh, we can do that, right? And I've also got the type. Uh, shown up as a tooltip. And meanwhile, I can get the type here, but I've also got the value. So I can get the value. And of course, if I really want that column display name, I can get that as well. Now, you'll notice that this footer was applied, but this footer still looks like the standard. Well, that's OK. All we've got to do is get our group props. So I'm going to copy this whole thing. I'm going to paste it again, and we'll take a look. Boom. So you'll see I've still got that same thing we just did with the footer formatter down here. But up here, I've just taken group props and pasted the exact same footer formatter here, except that I changed the font size. So preview that, and now you have it. So we can specify that for footer format separate from the main footer format. So you can do quite a bit with that, which is cool. It's pretty fancy, 
right? All right, one last, so uh, we're out of time. So I'm just going to, we'll have to skip the next part. Uh, there is some uh, complications if you're doing a double nesting uh, of groups. And when you're doing something along those lines, you're going to want to take a look at that column display name and maybe set your display to none on multiple elements. So there is a sample for that, but I'm going to skip it in the interest of time. So I can just go to the wrap up so Vesta doesn't uh, cry. Don't cry, Vesta. All right. So last little thing here. So header formatter, footer formatter, and then hide footer. That's all within that group props. Um, and then you've got the group here uh, where you can get these various values. Uh, one thing to note is it is the display name when you pull that out. It is not the internal name. You don't have any access to that right now. That is something I've requested. Hopefully we get that at some point. And then, of course, the list footer itself. Again, you've got another footer formatter. So now we've got three different spots to put possible footer formatters, but they are a little different in each spot. So the form, the aggregate bar, and within the group. And, of course, you can hide that footer, and then you can get all the column aggregate information here. Very exciting stuff. And then, of course, there is full documentation on this in the view formatting. So check that out. You'll notice there is a section in there called at aggregates uh, where they suggest using a for each. Uh, honestly, I, I can't figure it out. So if anyone else uh, wants to figure that and let me know how that one works, that'd be great. Uh, but we've got a ton of samples on this, uh, both about view formatting, column formatting, but also illustrating how to do the groups from the very simple. Uh, we looked at to some pretty elaborate things where you're doing nested groups and so on. But that's it. That's all I got. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.